I'm going to be going over the steps that I take to reload 6.5 Creedmoor ammunition for PRS type shooting. This is for entertainment purposes only. Always follow and read your reloading manual. This is just simply what I do and definitely not instructions on what you should do. So uh, this isn't the bare minimum of steps preloading, but also it isn't all the way to the end end of say what uh, bench rest guys will do. I don't weight sort brass, I don't tip bullets, I don't do those steps. I find this just a happy medium that works to get accurate ammo for myself. All right, so these are the steps I'm gonna be going through. I'm gonna first deprime the cases, then I'm gonna tumble, I'm gonna size with a neck bushing die. Uh, it's a full length body size, but then using a neck bushing to set neck tension. And in that, I'm gonna be going over bushing selection and bumping the shoulder. Then I'm gonna trim if needed, tumble again, brush the necks, prime the case, throw powder, and then seat the bullet. And I'm going to be seating the bullet uh, using the O-Jive, using the bullet comparator from Hornady. So, yeah, just watch along and uh, I hope uh, hope you enjoy. I like to start with depriming all my cases. So right here I have my little depriming setup. This is an old rock chucker. I have a Hornady decapping die on it. And the inline fab case eject system. Just a little piece of spring seal. Kicks it down on a little chute. Really makes it streamlined. Anyway, uh... This is Alpha Brass. I like using quality brass. Uh, Alpha, Lapua, any other quality brand. <laughs> Dig in, you're all good. And just go through here and do every piece like such. So after I have everything deprimed, I it, it's time to tumble. Uh, there's not much to it. Anyway, I use uh, some walnut and corn cob husk, basically 50-50 mix. I'll put in a splash, a new finish, polish, or even some of this uh, Dylan stuff that I came upon. As long as it's ammonia free, it's good to go. And yeah, just I'll put her in there, let, her let it tumble overnight. Nothing fancy. It's good enough for John Pinch. It's good enough for me. Okay, so I let this tumble overnight, do a couple hours, doesn't really matter, well, until your brass is clean. And I just wanted to touch on uh, with, the, with the polish adding to it, I don't uh, add it every step. I'll just, uh, for e each time I refresh the, the tumbling media, I'll let it, I'll put in a cap full, let it run for several hours, even overnight again with no brass, so then it works all the way in, and then, I'll start tumbling with it for the for the lifetime of that powder. So after that, easy enough. Just take it out. You can either pan for gold, something like this, or if you're doing a little bit more volume, you want some uh, more speed, get a rotary sifter like this. There you go. Nice, shiny, tumbled, clean piece of brass. OK, 
Okay, so after tumbling, always like to take this old towel and get, just kind of wipe any of the dots that's sticking on them. Look at all that nice clean brass. Okay, now that I have everything all tumbled, and I got the dust wiped off, I, uh, I lube them up, so I put my brass and a little rubber made, spray around some of that case lube, the aerosol style, shake it around, and there you go. And then even when I'm sizing, just because I find it like really goes in and out of the die easy, put some uh, case sizing wax on it. I'll just have my finger and just like quick around the neck, nothing too crazy. And I find that that really helps, uh, helps it size easily. Okay, so next up is resizing. So for resizing, I use a full length sizing die, but with the neck bushing, this is Hornady Match. That's what I got here for my 6.5 Creed. And in order to select the proper size neck bushing, you want a case that is of the same brass that you're reloading, but with the bullet seated in it. There's other ways to do this, but this is the way I do it. Okay, so the seated bullet, measure it up, 292. And it is, it is well accepted that 2,000 neck tension is good for consistent ammunition. So, if that's seated, you're at 292. If you have a 290 bushing in there, that's gonna squeeze your neck when it sizes down to 290. So then when you seat your bullet, it's gonna push out that 2000. So that's your 2000's neck tension. So I've got a 290 bushing in here already. And then I got my die, should be set up. And next, you wanna bump back the shoulder when you're sizing. Uh, a lot of guys aim for two thou. Uh, with this brass in particular, it's had like four or five firings without annealing on it. So it is quite hard to push a shoulder back on one stroke. So normally I'll run it through twice on the die and I'm getting it right now. So it'll bump it back about five thousands. Okay. Uh, it just, you, you don't want like sticky bolt knob closing and you don't want to like knock it back a mile because then you're overworking your brass so in order to see how much you are bumping back the shoulder i like to use these hornady headspace dies they have the comparator body and then the different sizes up here sell them in a pack and you take that put it on your calipers like so Zero them out. Okay. Oh, so here we go. Here's a piece of brass. So, 1540. That's what is measuring. Yeah, 1540. You can see that. So, when we size it, we're going to size it and then we're going to measure it again. Let's run it through. This is already set up, uh, like screw in your die until like, you, you, gotta, you gotta adjust it. You can use different reading shell case holders, yada yada. There is tons, tons of different ways. Basically you just gotta adjust your die until you're just bumping that shoulder back that little bit. So here we go. There's one. So yeah. 1539, so yeah, bumped it back about a thou. As I said, this brass, it's uh, it's getting hard because it hasn't been annealed. So there we go, put it through again. And yeah, just as I expected, 1535. So we bumped the shoulder back five thou, and I know that this closes nice and easily in my firearm. 
you'll know if if you aren't bumping the shoulder back enough if you have freshly reloaded ammunition and it's tough to chamber you gotta really force your your bolt handle down if it's semi-auto you might not have like full seating anyway so i'll just go through Here, i'll measure this one before all right it's one five four zero mm -hmm. Okay, 1536. So we bumped it back about three and a half thou. Another one. Uh, and then again, for seating, you definitely don't have to use a press that's expensive, like your Rock Chucker, your Hornady, your Lees. That's just fine. Just this is what I choose to use. One other thing I just wanted to go over that I feel is a little bit of a, call it a die hack, if you will, is a lot of people, they like to remove the, the expander ball completely on their dies when neck bushing sizing, which makes sense because this ball is oversized, so you're going through all the trouble to set your exact neck tension just to rip this oversized ball through your casing, and you'll even feel it in the handle when you're doing it. So what I did is because like sometimes you, you you ding in your case neck like this one here just slightly deformed from ejecting whatever it is when you're shooting but I, I wanted to push that out a little bit because just the way that a bushing works is it just seats the outside it doesn't actually like expand through the middle so you can see here oh all right so that i can just kind of push it in with some uh with some effort this here is a sized case and just goes in and out no problem. Okay, so what I did is I took the seating stem out, put it up in a drill, and then just went at it with sandpaper to just bring it down enough so it just effortlessly goes in and out of the case. But if I do have a dinged neck, it will push that out for me somewhat. So feel like it's best of both worlds, just something that I wanted to cover here. So, screw that back in. Yeah, here's my slightly deformed case. There you go. Nice and round again. Yet you don't get that feeling like you're gonna rip your necks off every time that you that you size your brass all right so we're all sized up good to go so now you got to double check if you if you got a trim or not so 1.920 is max length for 6.5 creedmoor yeah there you go 1.918 so i'm getting close All right, right on the nose. So if you're over, you gotta trim down 10 thou. Luckily, it looks like this batch and get away one more firing before trimming because who likes trimming? All right, so let's go get it tumbled up again.
Okay, so my next step sounds a little ridiculous, but I brushed the necks. Uh, Amp, they did a great video showing how it improves your neck consistency. So yeah, just got a nylon brush here, chalked up in a drill. Easy as this. It's a quick step. It seems ridiculous, but you can really feel the difference in your handle. I suggest trying it out for yourself. Uh, yeah, I, if you can't tell, I'm shocked at how well it works. So I got all those brushed up. Now I just uh, double check the primer pockets to make sure that they don't have uh, any bits of media in them because sometimes it gets stuck. Let me find one for you. All right, here we go. So we're looking to make sure we don't get that. So I just go through them all. I don't have any. Okay, so on second thought, I'm actually going to trim these brass. Uh, some of them were a little bit over, so got everything all set up here, and I'll let you uh, enjoy the monotony. So 1.910 is trim length. I'm looking for so we're at 1.210 right now. So I just got it so it touches. Okay, 1.20, so I should be able to dial this in, 10 thou. Okay, that should be close. Okay, 1.909, so within a foul. Beauty. So I'm just going to back that off just a smidge. And let's see what we bring this one to. One point nine oh nine five, so within a half out. It's good enough for me. Okay, it's Linda Champer. Chalk my deburring tour tool up in the drill. I do all of it this step, and then I got a little hack for doing the other side. Okay, 
Then to do the outside, this is my little hack. Got the adapter to put it in a drill. Put a little rapid tape around my deburring tool. And with some tape, saves the carpal tunnel. All right, getting down to it. So now it's time for priming. Got my Hornady hand primer. Using Fed Large Rifle Match. I hate the containers for the Federal Primers. That's why I use this. Winchester, CCI, basically anyone else. It's a lot quicker, just federal has to be different. Cool. It's not just too easy. I don't fully, like I don't over cam the crimper. I just get it in and off. Try and get a fairly consistent seat feeling. Alright, so now it's time to throw powder. Uh, I got right here, it's a FX120i with a V3 auto throw. It's a it's definitely more heavy duty than what you need. That, that's for sure. You can make plenty of accurate ammo with a balance beam scale, little hand trickler, uh, and go that route. Uh, this is just like a little bit more, more convenient, and a little, little bit faster. But yeah, you certainly don't need this. Uh, and yeah, then another thing I like are these Lyman powder cups. They have a bunch of different inserts for your different calibers. They come in this whole kit and yeah, reasonably priced and works very well. So I just go ahead. Normally do uh, 50 or 100 rounds at a time. Uh, yeah, it just seems to work nice, fills up a case. And then it, it's, it's, a, it's enough of a session throwing powder that by the time it's over, you're pretty much done with it anyway. Okay, so once I've thrown all my powder, I like to double check that I don't have any squibs. Either shine a lamp in there, use a flashlight, just check every case to make sure that there's powder in there. Okay, now to pick which depth to seat my bullets at, I uh, measure the chamber of my rifle using this Hornady overall length gauge. So you get this plus the modified case for your specific caliber, and then you can find how far your bullet is when the ogive is touching the lands. Or when it's touching the lands, I should say. And then I also like to use the Hornady bullet comparator. So since I'm doing 6.5, got the little 26 cal in there on the comparator body. Got that zeroed out. And when I measured my rifle, it was 2.273 to the lands. So I got it backed off, like jumping it roughly 10 thou. So what you do is take a case. See it? So the reason I use the comparator is because uh like especially with uh hollow points. Is it, uh, like, they, they aren't uniform length, like, overall bullet length, but the ogive is a lot more consistent area. So, 2.263.
and I was 2.273 to my land. So that means that I'm jumping 10 thou. There you go. And uh, ever since I started brushing the necks, what, what sold me is just the feeling on the handle. It's uh, like before that, yeah, like the bullets, they, like it, ju it just felt like it was inconsistent force to seat each one, even though I was doing 2,000 neck tension. But with this, it is far more uniform. Uh, I guess it's it's almost bro science, but uh, as I said, uh, AMP, they have a great video that you can Google where it's an overview of their new AMP press, where they show the differences in force and on the chart of how consistent uh, different processes are. Yeah, this is uh, finally the last step. This is what we work towards. A nice, fully reloaded rifle cartridge. High quality ammo. There you have it, 100 rounds of 6.5 Creedmoor, ready for the range. So using these techniques, my rifle will shoot 0.4 MOA or better, and SDs and ESs both in the single digits. That being said, not much of a group shooter, find it kind of boring, so as long as all my bullet holes touch, it's good enough for me, and I'll go shoot and steal. Hope you enjoyed, and once again, this was for entertainment purposes only, always read and follow your reloading manual. Anyway, take care. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.